The eclipse is wholly explained by the heliocentric spinning globe model. Period. Cut off the heads of 131 lords. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. And he took me with him. Hey everybody, some of you may have heard that there's going to be a solar eclipse on August 21st. That's in a week. And people in the United States will actually experience the totality this time around. Because of this, I'm seeing a lot of talk from flat earthers. Talk of how the eclipse is proof of a flat earth. One gentleman, a D. Marble, has gone so far as to say that after the eclipse, the globe model will be done. Now, solar eclipses happen about every year to 18 months in different parts of the world, so why this eclipse will devastate the globe model while every other eclipse has not is beyond me. Maybe it's because this eclipse is happening in America during a time of a resurgence of anti-scientific thinking? During a time of ignorance and stupidity that can spread as fast as fact? Faster than fact, because it takes less time to not think things through. When you're not concerned that your answer is going to be scrutinized, you can distribute it much faster. Now this isn't to say that people like Daryl are necessarily ignorant or stupid. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge. They just don't know something. Now, some arguments that they put forth show ignorance of scientific principles and disciplines. Stupidity means they don't have the intellectual tools to process what they know. And I don't think that's the case at all. They're not stupid people. But they use their intellect to process flawed ideas and are hampered partly by ignorance and by what I can only describe as small thinking. The traits of small thinking are the unwillingness or inability to think for very long for an answer. The unwillingness or inability to deal with things at a large scale. And the desire to have an answer that's easily understood. D. Marble gives a great example of this small thinking in his video, The Globe is Done, on August 21st. The question he poses in his video is, if the Earth is spinning west to east, which it is, and the Moon orbits the Earth west to east at a slower rate, which it does, why does the shadow of the eclipse travel from west to east across the surface of the Earth? And that's a great question, but it takes time to think about, requires thinking at a large scale, and is not uh, an, an easy answer. It's not very simple, which Daryl can't handle. He shows clips of spokespeople having this question put to them and not being able to explain it. He says this is because they are stuck by the fact that a globe model can't explain it. Yes, it can and does, but damned if I were put on the spot during an interview and told I had less than a minute to explain it, I'm pretty sure I would botch it. In his unwillingness to think long about it, Daryl hastily puts together a demonstration. In his unwillingness to think at a large scale, the proportions of his demonstration are too small. His moon is too close to the earth, his sun is too close, and the rate he's moving the objects is way off. But it gets him to a simple answer, which is his goal all along. And his answer is very wrong. The appearance and path of a solar eclipse is wholly consistent with the heliocentric model. And its appearance is proof that the model presented by flat earthers is utter bullshit and cannot explain the appearance of the solar eclipse. First, let me show how this heliocentric model and a spinning globe thoroughly explains the direction of the eclipse shadow across the Earth. D. Marble's claim comes down to this. If the Earth is spinning west to east like the established science claims, I represent that here with a spinning circle. The top end represents the east and the bottom the west. And if the moon is orbiting west to east at its lower rate, the Earth should speed past the shadow of the eclipse and the shadow should appear to travel from east to west. In this model, that's represented by the shadow crossing low numbers and moving on to higher numbers. This makes sense to the small thinking folk but it's wholly wrong. Here's my more accurate model. First, I have the Earth represented by this colorful circle here. Out from there, I have the moon at scale in size and orbital distance. Out from there, I have the sun at scale of size and distance. I don't have the Earth orbiting the sun in this model because the distance traveled over a period of hours is negligible. Looking closer at the Earth system, I set the Earth spinning west to east at a rate of four seconds for each day. I set the moon orbiting the Earth at a rate of one orbit for every 27.3 days. 
I have a line representing the direction of the shadow of the moon. The arrowhead on the end of that line represents the direction of the sun. The shadow of the moon is always oriented in the direction of the sun. Let's watch it play out. Admittedly, at this size, it's hard to see, so let's zoom in closer. And closer still. Now let's slow it down. Stop here. The shadow of the moon has touched the Earth here, dead center between the five and the six, the purple and blue lines. If the six line catches up and passes the shadow line, that means the shadow is moving east to west relative to the surface. If the shadow line catches up with the five line, that represents a shadow moving west to east relative to the Earth's surface. As we advance, you can see that the shadow is moving west to east, not just in reality, but is moving west to east relative to the surface of the Earth. The shadow is going from the high numbers toward the lower numbers, first moving away from six, crossing five, then four, and three before going off the Earth altogether. If number six were, let's say, the Pacific Ocean, the shadow would be crossing there and moving across the country from Oregon to Nebraska, South Carolina, and then to the Atlantic. Why this happens is not an easy thing to explain. You have two bodies in rotational motion, the Earth and the Moon, and an object that's movement is wholly dependent on the changing relationship between the Moon and the Sun. That's not easy to explain with pictures, and it's nearly impossible to explain in words quickly. Flat Earthers live in that zone of things that are tough to explain and hard to understand. They rely on the small thinking of people, the inability or unwillingness to take the time and ponder an explanation. That's how they sow doubt. Ignorant, lazy-based doubt. The eclipse is wholly explained by the heliocentric spinning globe model. Period. In my next video, I'll show how the solar eclipse proves that this flat earth model is bullshit. That's my job! That's what I do! No one on this planet to even challenge me. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.